Welcome back to the Mentored and Engineer. In our last video, we started talking about the four components of every hydraulic system. These are things that every hydraulic system must have. All right, so first would be a um, reservoir and a pump, which we talked about in the last video. This video, we are gonna talk about our relief valve and our filters. Okay, so a relief valve basically comes in two types. You're gonna have your pilot operated ones, and your direct acting ones, okay? And you're never gonna have both types in the same system. So if I have a pilot operated one here, I'm not gonna have a direct op uh, acting one. If I have a direct acting, I'm not gonna have the pilot operated one. But I'm gonna explain how they both work uh, and why you would choose one or the other. Basically, it comes down to uh, what is your flow. If your flow is reasonable, I'd say under you know, 30 to 50 gallons per minute, um, you can probably get a direct acting valve for what you need. If it's over that, you're probably going to have to use a pilot acting valve. All right, so how do they work? So my oil comes out of my pump at high pressures, and it'll go over here to where the work is done, and if the pressure starts rising, it's going to come down here, and it's going to try to go through this block. But the arrow does not line up with those, so it's not going to go through. But what it does do is it sends a small trickle of oil over here, uh, it's a pilot signal, and starts pushing this block this way. And if it overcomes the force of the spring, it's going to slide over and the oil is going to go back to the tank. And based upon that spring pressure is what pressure the oil will get to before it uh, leaves. All right, so we're doing this to make sure that our system never gets overpressurized and the bad things happen, you know, we violate uh, the pressure ratings of other components. Uh, we can snap off our shaft on our pump uh, and other sorts of things. All right, so uh, that one's fairly simple. Pilot operated is a little bit different here. Uh, we still kind of have the same beginnings. All right, so we got pressure coming down and it can't go through here to uh, the other side of the valve. And it starts building up uh, pilot, pilot pressure on the side of the block and then start shifting this over. And when it does that, it's gonna send oil through to pilot this unloader valve. Now unloader valve here, we're gonna have our main flow right here, and it's gonna be much, much bigger than this valve is. All right, so it's gonna go through, and it stops unless there's pressure here to shift this over. When that happens, this shifts over, compresses the spring, and oil goes to our tank. So it does the same thing, but it does it with a much, much bigger high, uh, hydraulic flow. Uh, we're looking at like 50 to you know, 200, 300 gallons a minute. And it is possible that you might need uh, you know, several of these unloader valves uh, to handle all your flow. Okay, so as I mentioned before, you're either gonna have a direct acting or you're gonna have a pilot with an unloader. You're not gonna have both systems in there at the same time. All right, so up on here on our pressure line, uh, we're going to finally get to our work, and we're not concerned with what the work is here. We may be operating cylinders, maybe doing a hydraulic motor, uh, maybe some clamps, um, who knows. Uh, but on the other end of that, you're going to have oil that needs to return back to the reservoir. So right here we got that, and we want it to come down into a filter. All right. So the filter is this diamond shaped thing here with the dashed lines indicating that there's some sort of uh, screen device that is... Uh, filtering out particles. All right, and then that'll come to the reservoir. Okay, now we also have a protection device in here, and it's just a bypass flow check. All right, so if, if the pressure differential here is great because you know our filter is clogged, oil is going to come through here, past this check that's held in place by a spring, and then over here to tank. All right, so that that spring is usually rated at like uh, 25 to 35 PSI um, just so there's some protection essentially so uh, at high pressure differentials here we can actually push more material that we've already filtered out through so a clogged filter can actually you know work against us if we don't have this in here it could be you know returning a whole bunch of stuff uh, right back into our system so that's something we, we don't want to do there's three things you need to know about sizing a filter. All right, the first thing you need to know is what is your flow, all right? And your flow may or may not be 
whatever your pump flow is. All right. So if I'm only operating hydraulic motors and I'm putting out 10 gallons a minute, I should expect to see 10 gallons a minute back through those filters. All right. If I'm extending a very large cylinder, I might have oil returning very fast uh, just because of the, uh, the area differential in a serial cylinder. So if I have 10 going out, I may have 15 coming back. Uh, it may even be more than that. So make sure you're sizing it on the maximum amount of return flow that you can see. All right, the next thing you need to know is what size particle are you filtering? In this example, I'm going to use 10 microns. Now, 10 microns, uh, or a micron, is one millionth of a meter. So it's, it's a very small distance uh, in diameter that this particle would be. Okay, I think the human eye can only see... Uh, I think it's four microns. Uh, so this, you know, 10 microns is, is just over double uh, what that would be. Okay, so that's how big it is. You can also get them, uh, I think popular sizes are three micron and five microns and probably 20. Um, and then the third piece of information that you will need is how efficient it is at filtering out that size. Okay, and that's displayed in this formula right, or this, this format right here. So I have a beta value, look at it at 10 microns, and I just put in 20 right here. All right, I want a filter that's, that's 20 efficient. Uh, and that's kind of a funny name, and this is how they, they come to that number. All right, my beta is equal to n minus 1 over n. All right, in that case, it's 20. So 20 minus 1 is 19 over 20. Uh, so it is 95% efficient. So um, it'll miss one particle out of every 20. All right, so with that, uh, it's kind of a goofy game um, as you, uh, at the worst you can get is a beta 2, all right? And that would be 2 minus 1, which is 1, over 2. That's 50% efficient, all right? That's pretty bad, so that one out of every two of these particles you're, you're letting go through. Um, but I multiplied that by 10, and I went from 50 to 95%, so that, that seems like a good jump. Now, if I go from a 20 to a 100, all right, that's 99% efficient from 95. I went up five times and only got 4% better. Uh, so, you know, it's a diminishing returns. If I go up to a beta 1,000, I'm getting 99.9%. Um, I went up a whole bunch. I went up 10 times there and got not even 1% better. All right, so there's a diminishing return. So a beta 20, not a bad filter. You know, beta 100, that's, that's even better. If you start going into beta 1,000 absolutes, you know, which is essentially affinity, um, you're really not getting as much of a bang for your buck as you might. So you might be spending a lot more money than uh, what it's worth. Okay, so now let's talk about the filter location. Now my personal preference is to always put it on the return line. Uh, so part of this is, um, if I have a clean tank when it starts off, all right, and I just run the system through and clean up the oil uh, a bunch before I really ever use it, just, just running it through, um, I'm cleaning that oil as it's coming back, all right? And that oil will stay fairly clean in the tank, all right? Uh, so... Where a lot of your new particulates that hurt hydraulic components come in is ingested material. This is especially true with cylinder. So a cylinder, if you have it retracted and you stick it out, it's got a nice oily wet rod um, that's attracting all sorts of dust and then it sucks it back in. Now a lot of that does get wiped off um, and particles go, but there's a lot of small, we're talking very small particles that come back uh, in the, you know, <clears throat> 5 to uh, you know 20 micron range that are hazardous to my pump, they can get in here, uh, they can get you know everywhere, they're, they're in the system, all right? So I'm ingesting these brand new uh, things coming in and hey, it goes right to my filter and you know if I got a, a 10 micron beta 20 filter, they're getting out of there, yeah, that's a good filter. Uh, so they're not coming into my tank, okay? So that's why I like it there. The other places you can put it are right here on the pump. Now, I don't like it here on the pump because um, 
you are putting in resistance to a uh, nice flow going into your pump. And that can cause something is called cavitation. If, if your pump is not getting the oil it needs, um, it will uh, basically create a lot of heat. A lot of heat will ruin your pump very fast. So if you have a dirty filter here, um, and you've got a, you know, a section line here, I'm sure you can get them lower, but if it's 25 or 30 PSI, your, your pump's going to cavitate pretty quickly unless you're changing that filter very, very often. Or you have your, your hydraulic tank uh, way above your, um, your pump. So I highly recommend that um, you would uh, take very specific caution when putting a filter on the suction line. Um, so the other thing you can do is use a high pressure filter and put it right after your pump. Um, kind of don't recommend this either and it's more of a money thing. Um, once again, you know, if your oil is fairly clean going in, what are you going to filter? You know, you've already put it through the pump, uh, so you kind of already did all the damage you're going to do. All right, so the other thing is, is it's a high pressure, so your canister now has to support, you know, 3,000, maybe even 5,000 PSI. Uh, so it's going to be very thick wall. Your membranes are going to have to be, um, you know, uh, uh, thicker, stronger, whatever. To, to handle that, that pressure. Um, so you're just talking a lot more money. Uh, nothing wrong with, with doing it here. And like I said, for me, I like returning the re uh, filtering the return oil because that's where I'm ingesting all of my, um, my contaminants. It's, it, I'm getting them out right as they're coming in. Thank you for watching this episode of The Mentored Engineer. I hope it was helpful and that you now have some knowledge about specifying relief valves, and uh, filters as and making sure uh, where you want to put them in your system. Thank you for watching.